is the moment UFC fans around the world have been waiting for. It's time! What's up, guys? Welcome to the MMA Countdown. We're going to be talking about UFC 207 results. I'm Blood Vampire, and we have Justin on the mic. Yo, what's up, guys? Um, Ronda Rousey got messed up, uh, and we got some other crazy fights, too. Yeah, so obviously, everybody knows, unless you live under a rock at this point, that Ronda Rousey just, after taking a year off, she didn't do media, she didn't do anything. I mean, she took a year off. Uh, she didn't even, like, uh, really show her face for an entire year, other than really the M L Ellen Generous show. And uh, all that... And Dana White, I mean, he didn't let Conor McGregor do that. He pulled him for, he pulled him off the card. But I understand what Rousey's done for the sport. Uh, that that's what gets me upset a little bit when people are talking about like uh, Rousey's career, how it's like done, or whatever. Uh, I mean, she still is probably the greatest women's fighter of all time in the UFC octagon. Without her, this wouldn't even be probably it definitely wouldn't be where it is today definitely wouldn't have sold for four billion she was the biggest star so you know people gotta still understand that yeah she took a year off and i think that that really hurt her i think she wasn't in the right set uh, frame of mind but i you know i think it's just the talent got a lot better the striking got a lot of better i mean i think it's a much talented fighters today than it was a year ago just last year the sports growing every single day so taking a year off is a big big move and i just i think that her her strategy going into the fight just wasn't there i think that her coach edmund i just think that she should have moved on from him i understand she's loyal but i mean look at travis brown for instance he went to edmund and he significantly his career took a hit same thing for Ronda I mean she wasn't moving her head she wasn't I mean I'm not gonna tell her what to do she's obviously a world-class pro but I think she just I mean just look at the stats of people going to him I mean they just haven't done better I mean she's a sh if you look at all her wins she was taking guys uh, girls to the ground arm bars this that and finishing people and I said she tried that but she was too hurt to realistically have a good shot at taking Amanda Nunes down but I just think that her game plan wasn't right going into that fight yeah it's her coaching staff really messed her up there she's a she's a world-class Olympian in judo and she thinks she could outbox the best in the world and she hits harder than any other woman i mean if you see what she did to tate when she hit tate i mean she tate said it herself she predicted uh nunez to win that fight because she said she sees nobody who hits as hard as she basically retired uh misha tate and possibly rousey i don't know about you but i can't see rousey returning after she might, she might return just to like with a different coaching staff but she's just too low. I feel like she would have done that already. I think she would have done that after her first fight. I think she's humiliated. She took a year off after that fight. Now losing two in a row. I think her mindset might be in a better place after this fight than the first fight. Dana White said that. You know, but I just can't see her returning after two losses. I hope she does. She's great for the sport. Uh, she's obviously the biggest star the women's have. But I would love to see her come back, but I just I can't see it at this point. Because you have to understand, I can't see her getting a title shot. And do you think she's going to want to, you know, fight other than that at this point? I feel like she doesn't need the money. She got, she's got she got better things uh, that she could do and then get a punch in the head. I just can't see her doing that at this point. Well, you got to also understand, everybody keeps saying she's the star of the MMA, even... Coming up into the fight, he, Amanda Nunez knew she was not going to get any pretty much publicity, even though she's the champ. Yeah, they did no promoting for her at this point, at, leading up to the fight. But I mean, but everyone understand, even though Rousey, she did whatever she did, she still lost. 
now two times back to back. But look at Holly Holm. She lost two fights in a row. She's fighting for the championship in a main event and UFC 208, which I disagree with. I don't see how someone fighting two losses in a row is in the main event in a championship fight, but that's a different time. The main, the main event in Brooklyn, the first time ever. Second fight in New York, in Brooklyn. That should not be the main event. Yeah, I'm not taking anything away from home, but I just, you know, I thought, yeah, I, I can't see somebody coming off with two losses getting a title shot. You know, look at guys like TJ Dillashaw who've been number one for a while now, and they they haven't had a title shot in a long time. And leading, talking about TJ Dillashaw, he was on this card, UFC 207, and he dominated John Lineker. He won via anonymous decision 30 to 26. All three judges scored it that way, and he just dominated Lineker. And Lineker is a pretty good fighter. He's been, you know, uh, one of the top bantamweights for, for a good amount of time. Uh, not the top, but he, he was up there, a strong bantamweight guy, and TJ Dillashaw just embarrassed him. Uh, you know, he's a former champion, TJ Dillashaw. I think he should definitely be getting his shot next. Obviously, Dominic Cruz and Cody Garbrandt were on that card as well, but talking about Dillashaw, after that victory, they were, Cody Garbrandt and TJ Dillashaw used to be training partners at uh, Uriah Faber's camp, Alpha Male. And, uh, I just, he deserves a shot next. It's going to be interesting because Dominic Cruz, I think, deserves a shot as well. But he said he has no problem. TJ Dillashaw again the next fight for the title. But Gar Garbrandt. Dominic Cruz gets his rematch like it should be. He should be because he was so dominant. But, uh, then Dominic Cruz says he has no problem TJ getting it. But Garbrandt wants to fight Dillashaw. So it's a weird thing we got going there. TJ Dillashaw has been in the sport now for a while, but you can't, Dominic Cruz was the champ, he deserves his rematch, whatever. But I mean, that's his first loss in 10 years. Yeah, he deserves his rematch, because Cody Garver, he's new to the sport, TJ Dillashaw, he's been here kind of longer than Cody, I would say. Let's talk about that, the Cody Garber and Dominic Cruz fight. Garbrandt won an anonymous decision, 48-46. That was two judges, ruled it that way in 48-47. And that was a really good fight. It went to the distance, obviously. And Cruz, who's been just so good not being able, people just haven't been able to find his chin. He's so quick. He's in and out. But Cody Garbrandt just dominated him. I mean, I've never seen Dominic Cruz get hit that hard, he dropped him a couple of times, and what a tough guy, he stood in there, he hung, he hanged in there with, uh, uh Cody Garber, and that's why he's a champion, he didn't give up, you know, he, a lot of guys would have been out, but, uh, Garbrand, uh, he was doing Dominic Cruz type things, and he was letting, making Dominic Cruz miss, and that's normally what we see from, uh, Cruz, and Garbrand's possibly a candidate for fight of the year, I think he went 4-0, and didn't lose, and he's obviously on top, and it was cool what he did with that, uh, his friend Maddox at the end, so. Yeah, there's a lot of fighters now, uh, about Cody Garvin, there's a lot of fighters now trying to act like Conor McGregor, try to be Conor McGregor, because, you know, we all know Conor McGregor right now is probably one of the best in the sport, he's, uh, so far uh, Cody, he's the only one that could really show for his talent, just, just doesn't do the talking, he also shows for what he talks. Yeah. And Dominic Cruz is probably the second best trash talker in my opinion. He and he you know, I respect Cruz and I respect what he did after after the fight, how he was that that uh post fight conference, that was probably one of the best things I've seen in the sport. But Cody Garbrandt had an incredible year. So did Dominic Cruz. I think Dominic Cruz will be back. I think he will definitely get a rematch. And if he gets the rematch next, I definitely think TJ Dillashaw should not fight. I think he should wait after their rematch because then he's obviously next in line. So I definitely think those guys will definitely be getting a title shot within the next two fights. So it should be interesting to what goes on from here. But what do you think is next for Amanda Nunes? Well, right now... The, all the talks with Cyborg and everything, I would say that she'd be, maybe she could fight her, maybe not. Well, but that whole division that was made for Holly Holm and uh, Durandame 
was supposed to be Cyborg's division. Exactly. And now she just got busted for roids. She pretty much just beat the best in the game. Yeah. But she said she's taking a year off to go back home, spend time with her family. Yeah. Now, rightfully so, she just fought a couple times in the past few months. But uh, you also got uh, Tarek Sefadini lost in a really close fight to Hai and Kim. And uh, Johnny Hendricks ver versus Neil Magny, a welterweight fight. That was a really close fight, could have went either way. But Johnny Hendricks, a former champion, missed weight a couple of fights in a row. So I don't know what's up with him. I think, yeah, I think he should move up. Possibly because he obviously can't make weight at welterweight anymore, and it's really disappointing what's happened with his career. Listen, when fighters fighters know what they got to do, when they slip on the off season, it's only they can blame themselves. Yeah. They, especially like him, he's been in the game for a while now. He knows what he needs to do. He's a former champion, and now he just basically... But also, as fighters age, like, they can't really do anything about their weight. So, like, it all has to do with age. And there was a rumored, uh, Garbrandt wants to fight McGregor, and do you see anything in that? Or do you think it's just all talk? Listen, there's a lot of rumors with McGregor. Everybody wants to fight McGregor. Everybody's trying to get a piece of him. Even McGregor, boxers. Everybody wants that money fight. Tyrone Woodley said it. And now Woodley wants to fight Bisping. It's just... I don't know. The whole thing with Woodley and McGregor, that's just not a smart thing for McGregor. No. McGregor will get And McGregor's not even in the plans for the next 10 months. He said he's taken off. Dana White confirmed that multiple times. So I just... I can't no, even see... Everybody's just talking for now. It's all yeah. rumors. Yeah, exactly. But... Yeah. So, guys, that's the end of our first podcast. This has been the MMA Countdown with Blip and Justin. Make sure you subscribe, drop a like, leave a comment, your thoughts and results, what you thought of the results, and what you think about the next pay-per-view, UFC 208, and give us our feedback on our first video. Peace.